This is Wild Daisy. Much wild. She does the wild things that she does, and she's a stinky. Right now, I'm getting as close as I can possibly get to her, but since her brain is the size of a string bean, she doesn't recognize that I'm here. She does not realize it at all. As you can see, she's sniffing for something. She's on the hunt. And she's very small. Not really. As you can see, we are up close. And she still does not realize. She still does not realize that I am here. She pays no mind to me. And she has no idea that I'm a foot in front of her. Now, as we follow this majestic creature. Still, that still does not realize that I'm following it. You can get up close. You can touch it. Now, she still doesn't even realize that I am here. As you can see, her ears are big and floppy. She has a big snoot that does a lot of licks. And she's also very, very docile and domesticated, as you can see. Because she still doesn't even realize that I'm here. Isn't that right, animal in the wild? She's extremely, extremely rare in the eyes of nature. And there's only very, very few animals in the world that are like her. In Ireland, she's referred to as the Stinkaflopo. A very, very rare mystical creature that grants people good luck. In Russia, she's known as the Vodka Flopper. And she also likes to eat poop, but she won't do that today. In England, she's known as the Queen Flop. And in America, she's just known as the Philopperaptor. Scientists call her the Philopperaptor, which is also the American term, or the almighty Flopasaurus Rex. As you can see now, she's going incredible speeds, which she just gave up on doing. But now she's going at it, hunting her prey that she probably won't even find, because then again, her brain is the size of a string bean. Now, right now she's taking in the beautiful view of the world between, through her big, beady, dopey eyes. Now she's back on the trail. As you can see, right now her tail is not doing anything. But I can assure you, at its maximum flop, it can go about 75 wags a second, which is very fast. As you can see, she has four legs, two floppy ears, big stinky snoot, and a big head. And sometimes she runs so fast that even her brain starts to shake because it is so small sometimes. Other times it is big. She can be smart sometimes. Right now, we are watching the big Philoporaptor look for its prey. We continue to watch it go through the vicious gnats of Natalin and we follow it continue to follow it's in its natural habitat so it feels 100% confident that it can lose me now it is taking off at speeds close to full now it's in the woods we watch this domestic beast this beautiful creature run off into the woods You can't help but notice that now she's baffled by the sounds of a helicopter going through the sky in her natural habitat. And she wonders what is on her domain and she vows to find that item. That said monster that's on her domain. Now, as we watch 
She sees us. She's alert. She knows that we're here. But she keeps ignoring us. Because now, her smart side is coming out. She found something. She knows that something is here. And she is hunting for it. As you can see, now she's going into foreign territory and waiting for me to follow. Because she knows that I am taking a video of her. So we must be very quiet and make sure she does not hear us. She's lost us. And now the hunt begins for her to find us. As you can see, she now doesn't care for us anymore. But she's coming over now. She's a very stealthy animal. It blends in with the trees and the grass, even though she's all black and white. An ideal companion for hunting. These animals, when they're domesticated, can be extremely powerful with attack power levels over 9,000. But at the same time, their intelligence level is very dumb. And now, we will talk to the scientist that knows a lot about this strange, magical beast. Yes, hello. I'm a scientist, and I worked with this documentary crew in order to observe and study this spectacle known as the Philoposaurus Rex, or the Philoparaptor. Personally, the Philoposaurus Rex is my favorite. Now, let's begin with the genetic history of this magical beast. Millions of years ago, when the dodo birds roamed the earth, a dodo bird interloped with Sid the Slav from Ice Age. Um, we're not sure how, and also we don't want to know. Why? Yeah, we don't want to know why. It's beyond science. As you can see, the dodo bird has a very big beak. And that trait carried over into the offspring. Sid's eyeballs, his big nose, tongue... And his brain, which is a smaller than a penny, also was carried over into that animal. Millions of years later, this beast somehow survived. And the offspring of an elephant and a floof, or a dog, carried over as well. Now, as you can see, it's not possible for these things to happen, but somehow it did. The genes from an elephant's ears, snoot, and eyeballs was carried over into said offspring, and the snoot of the floofer and the smile and the tongue and the ears was also carried over. And then... The offspring that somehow survived millions of years through harsh conditions and little to no food, which is beyond also science as well, somehow miraculously interloped with the offspring of these two, thus creating this. Not this. This. As you can see, it has the paws of the floofer, the snoot of all the animals, and the eyeballs of the elephant, and Sid, and the dodo bird. Now, the ears definitely do come from the elephant, considering they are large, but the floof also comes from the floofer. And clearly, as you can see in this picture, it is dopey, which you get from this elephant, this intelligence, and these looks in general. Now, I'm a scientist, and I went to Harvard, and let me tell you, this is one of the most baffling cases of science I have ever seen. This is physically impossible to create an animal like this over the course of billions of years. So the only scientific explanation is that this animal right here is a god, and it has come to either save or destroy us all. This is watch the majestic beast. Drink the water. 
we can now tell that she loves water. Her favorite food is water. Favorite item to consume is water. And this is her friend, the rare little potato dog. We watch him closely behind. He recognizes that we are here. He knows we're here. He's getting closer. He's more shocked, but he thinks we are quiet. I get up as close as I can. Oh no, he's sniffing. He knows something's up. He realizes that I am here now. And now that I follow him, he runs away. Because he thinks I am a predator. He's running. And now he's gone into hiding. But we can still see his tail. And we see him again. Right there. And this is Daisy's mortal enemy. The cheese puff. Predator to all the flopper raptors friends. She is the most evilest of them all. But she also becomes really sweet. She knows that I am here. And she is ready to attack. If it is necessary. As you can see, the little potato guy doesn't realize that I'm here anymore and he really doesn't care. And now the Daisy goes to reason with her. And take over the bed. Oh no, Daisy, what will you do? <laughs> She's too busy to care. We watch the cheese puff attack with her toy. She then gives up and walks away. And then we watch and see the lion, the mightiest lion of them all, a bell, also known as the wild polar bear, or the ball of many unknown things. We watch as she sits upon, upon, uh, upon her perch and watches the chaos ensue. She's still attacking. Whatever shall I do? And this guy, this guy does not care anymore. He doesn't care at all anymore. Daisy now protects her kingdom with an iron furry paw. And watches as I get closer and closer and closer. I get closer to her. She's scared. She realizes that I am here, but now she's curious as to what I'm doing. So I watch. I notice that the cheese puff is still here. She's attacking, but now she doesn't care anymore. The cheese puff wants me to take the toy. It's clear now that she wants peace. So I take the toy from her, but she is reluctant. And the potato thinks it is his. And now, go cheese puff, go get the toy. But now, the potato has gotten to the toy first. And the cheese puff has given up her chase. And is tired. So now she's retreating. She's running. And now she gets the toy and attacks it to show off her strength. As she watches, she knows I'm close behind. She then chases away her competitor, the little potato. As he follows close behind because he's curious of what's going on, the cheese puff now falls back into her domain. Knowing that I am following her. Now she hides. And will not come out until I disappear. Oh, never mind, she's back. Aha, plot twist. She's running away now. Now, she's in total, complete hiding. We watch again as the Daisy, the Falop director, the Falopasaurus, watches over her domain. She's tired and needs a break. So, we're going to take a break. Isn't that right, Potato?
Also, that is her friend, as you can see. They are all friends. Impossible. <laughs> the scientist will explain what all that was. Hello, yes, I'm a scientist from Harvard, and as you can see, the lights are off. That's because the producer forgot to pay his electrical bill. Anyways, we will talk. Now. Oh, wait, I don't need those. Um, so. The cheese puff. The king Philoporaptor's natural enemy. Takes over every territory that the Philoporaptor owns and claims it as her own. The small potato is very cute and very neutral. He likes both, but he is more afraid of the cheese puff at times than he is of the Philoporaptor. Now, the lion, or the Bellatipu, is a very, very strange beast. She has the power to take over all the couches in her domain. The daisy does not care, for the Philoporaptor is too floppy and likes the ground. Back to you, documentary narrator. We watch the ferocious Philoposaurus Rex from afar. We can't help but wonder where her hideout is. Oh no, she sees us. She does not care because she's a majestic beast. Follow. The mighty, mighty beast, the ferocious Philoposaurus Rex. She's confuzzled by the fact that we are still following her. And she's like, what are you doing? And I am going videotaping. And then she says, oh, that is okay. Because she does not mind. Because she is a lady. The lady of the Philoposaurus. The floppiest, stinky of them all. Now they walk away. She follows. Taking a nice, gently, gently pleasant stroll in the midday sun. She stops. Because she has something on her nose. I'm gonna get up closer and she runs. Because she knows that I am here. Warning to those of you who ever encounter this animal. She can be much ferocious, and she just tripped. She can be much, much ferocious. And she can attack very much. We watch the big ear dope afloat and close in on her. We see that she now sees the bugs, and she is trying to eat the bugs. But she can't succeed. But she can't succeed because she cannot fly. Watch the dope a dope run away. She can't she can't get away. Ha ha ha. And here is the mighty dope of Philoporaptor Philoposaurus Rex's home. Where she does the eats, the sleeps, and the stinks. Oh no. She smells someone in her turf. She's going to walk around the edge to investigate. Never mind. She's not. We watch her do the hunts. Can't help but wonder why she's doing the hunts. Is it because she's hungry? Or is it because there's someone on her domain? She follow the dope dope. We notice that she keeps looking behind to see if I'm there. So I don't think I am the predator. She's looking for the predator. But she cannot find the predator either. If you follow her to a shaded area, she will take a break. She's not done with her break already for some reason. And now, she's wandering through the field, looking for something. Oh no, she sees a butterfly. 
He's gonna try to get it. Oh, she missed. As we follow her again, I continue to follow her. She can't help but wonder what is going on inside that dog's brain. She sees all the butterflies she can see, but she can never catch one. If you get closer, now we will ask her the question. Daisy, why are you chasing the butterfly? Excuse me, why are you chasing the butterfly? Why are you chasing the butterfly? Why are you chasing the butterfly, Dopey? Dopey, tell me why are you chasing the butterfly? Whoa. Oh, that's a good answer. She continues to follow her. She's getting annoyed. It's like he's following her. And now she's just done. She wants to go to bed. So, I will slowly walk away. Ew! No! Wild majestic beasts aren't supposed to do that. Bad stinky. Shit mouth. We'll be right back after this message. Hello, yes, I'm a scientist, and I'm here to tell you that these are our sponsors. Not legally, of course. Don't tell them I told you that. But this is Pringle Sour Cream and Onion, which I find very disgusting. Um, yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's pretty gross. Don't buy it. But give them business for the original flavor, because that's pretty good. And this is Lemonade. <laughs> can make 28 quarts of lemonade. Wow, that's a lot. Trust me, I'm a scientist. Um, it's also by 4C40. I can't read that, but I'm smart. Trust me, I went to Harvard. Um, and I uh, also contains vitamin C. <sighs> you know, I'm doing pretty good considering the fact that this budget is literally zero for this production. So, you know what? Cut me some slack and buy these things. All right, I quit. We're back. Right now, we are watching the majestic Flopsaurus Rex take a breather while she breathes in the nice, cool summer air. As we watch, it's clear she's not doing anything, but she's tired. Now she flops on her side, and as we watch the dopey of the dew, we can see now that the scientist has recognized it, that she is nothing but the big stinky dinky dog who loves everyone. And that concludes our documentary on the Floposaurus Rex. Have a good day.